Need advice? Download the free Hello Doctor app on any mobile phone and connect with our doctors right away for reliable personal advice. Go to hellodoctor.com and chat to a doctor anytime, anywhere for less than the cost of an apple a day. If you have a question about your health, don't just Google it, Hello Doctor it. In other words, don't get advice from just anyone. Go to a trusted source, your doctor. And if you don't have one or can't reach yours, then ask one of ours. We call that a house call. It isn't unusual for a cough from a cold virus to lurk around for up to two weeks, as long as that. But if it's still bugging you and everyone else you live with for longer than that, then it can become worrisome. Marianne called us this week and she says she'd been coughing for over a month. She tried all the over-the-counter medications, but because all the warnings said not to use them for more than 10 days, she says she felt a bit out of options. Oh, that's very good of her. Chronic coughing is one of the most common reasons for seeing a doctor, Marianne. Cough for a day or two, and you might think you picked up a cold or the flu. After a week, you might think allergies, but after three or four weeks, the worry begins to mount with one of the more common assumptions being that it must be TB. But TB isn't the only cause for a cough that won't disappear. You get allergies, there's smoking, there's bronchitis, asthma, uh, even reflux. I mean, you could have eliminated smoking right away, couldn't you, provided she was a non-smoker? Yes, no, she's not a smoker, and both her home and work are smoke-free zones too. Great. One down, five to go. Did she have any other symptoms like heartburn or a sore throat that would indicate something like reflux? And I ask her that because about one-third of all patients with reflux are pain-free, the only symptom is a cough. And I did ask her about this, specifically whether her cough was made worse after eating certain foods or after lying down. She said she hadn't noticed anything different. Her cough was consistently there, regardless. She did say that it was definitely worse at night, and as a result, her husband was now uh, not getting enough sleep Complaining. Yeah, I'm sure that <laughs> bothered him. It must have bothered him unless he was an undertaker and was used to the coffin. Oh. If her nights were disturbed, did she also have the typical TB symptoms of night sweats and fevers? No, she didn't display any TB symptoms and she had no fever. She also hadn't been in contact with anyone with TB or that she knew of anyway. Um, of course, she, we couldn't exclude TB because the only way to properly diagnose it is either via a skin test or a chest x-ray. Absolutely right. Without a fever though, we could exclude any type of infection, which is important. Could she describe the cough to you? She didn't have to. Um, she was coughing during our entire call. It was a wet, hacking cough that sounded terrible. I asked her whether she was coughing up anything to investigate the chronic bronchitis option. Unlike the other causes of a persistent cough, this one is easy to spot because the cough produces a lot of thick, dark coloured phlegm. Oh, the thought. Wow. <laughs> she said there was some phlegm, but it wasn't there all the time and was light in colour, so I was happy to exclude the chronic bronchitis. Oh, not my favourite. What about allergies? She admitted she was quite an allergic person and had been diagnosed with asthma when she was a child. It had all started off as exercise-induced asthma, but over time had developed into a chronic condition. She had been put onto medication that she was supposed to take daily, and she'd been on the medication about six years, and her symptoms had disappeared. Don't tell me she stopped taking the medication. Correct. Ugh. She told me that her lifestyle was crazy. She had two kids, and a demanding job. So she's forgetting to take her medication and get her scripts filled. She said because she hadn't noticed a change in her breathing, she thought that she must have outgrown her asthma and was okay to stop taking her medication no, altogether. No, 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 no. You see, now that is a common mistake amongst asthmatics. And in fact, anyone taking chronic medication, the reason you feel so much better when taking your medication is because it's working. The very reason you need to continue taking it. It's never a good idea to stop taking medication based on your own self-diagnosis. Now, asthma can be easily controlled, but not cured. You're not gonna grow out of it. Even if it has been under control for many years, it can be easily triggered again by something like an allergy or even a cold. As it turns out, that's exactly where the problem lay. She had picked up a cold, thanks to her youngest daughter at preschool, which had triggered her asthma. And because she assumed her asthma was so well controlled, she hadn't made the association. I advise her to see her doctor for a checkup and to get an updated script for her meds. Good advice. There's uh, a good reason scripts are only valid for six months. Things can get better, or in this case, a lot worse. So checking in with your doctor regularly is important. If you have a chronic condition, the best thing you can do is to be compliant with your medication. It really will and can save your life.
Need advice? Download the free Hello Doctor app on any mobile phone and connect with our doctors right away for reliable personal advice. Go to hellodoctor.com and chat to a doctor anytime, anywhere for less than the cost of an apple a day.